Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jay Larson! Thank you. We're gonna have a fun night, you guys. I uh, married the wrong woman. You know. <laughs> Who saw it coming? You know, how'd I know? You know what I mean? You get involved, you're like, oh, we'll see what happens. No, not the one, not the one. <laughs> Been together 11 years, married for six, two amazing kids, and I can tell you from the bottom of my heart, she's the wrong chick. She's the wrong chick. My wife takes pills with no water. Pretty sure she's killed a couple people. Who is taking pills with no water? I was having a nightmare one. I'm having a nightmare, right? And it's one of those nightmares where you're trying to communicate to the outside world that someone is trying to murder you, but you're asleep and you can't control your mouth or your body. So I was just like, like giving penguin hand and trying to tell my mouth to let her know, hey, someone's cutting my arm off with a butcher knife. So I'm going, Ooh! Finally, she kicks me in the thigh and goes, what? And I wake up and I go, I, 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 was, I was being murdered. I was, a guy was cutting my arm off with, with a butcher knife at a sub shop. And she goes, I'm trying to get some rest. And I rolled over and I grabbed a pillow from the floor and I put it between my legs and I was like, who is this bitch? <laughs> it's how I sleep. I think men are more sensitive than women. We have more feelings. We sleep like this. My wife sleeps like this. <laughs> like she's ready for death at any moment. Like, yeah, just that's fine. I have zero feelings towards anyone in the world. She's a very cold woman. We were at the park, and when you have kids, you're looking for cool kids, and hopefully they have cool parents, and then you become friends with them. So we see this cool kid, we're like, oh, hey, how you doing? Oh, yeah. Start talking to the mom. And at the time, my wife's pregnant with our second kid, and the woman goes, oh, how far apart are the kids gonna be? And my wife goes, uh, oh, uh, 18 months. And the woman goes, oh, my brother and I were 18 months apart. And my wife goes, oh, are you guys close? And she goes, oh, we were, my, he passed away. And my wife goes, oh, my brother and I were 18 months apart. We talk once a week. <laughs> what? The woman goes, oh, all right, have a good day. I grab my wife, I go, what are you doing? She goes, what? I go, the woman just told you her brother died and you come back with, oh, my brother still roams the earth. She goes, was that insensitive? I go, yes. She goes, I'll go say something. I go, get, get the fuck back. Would you shut up? She's a disaster at the playground. We saw a little kid running across this bridge on the playground, running across this bridge. And I see the mom, I go, how, how old is this guy? And she goes, oh, he's 17 months. My son is like this on it. Like, I don't know if I can go across. He's 21 months at the time. I'm like, fucking get across the bridge. <laughs> so I look at the woman, I'm like, wow, this guy's really doing great on the bridge, huh? And the woman goes, oh, this little bitch gives me a heart attack once a week. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, she's pretty loose, you know what I mean? calling her son a little bitch to people she just met. You know what I mean? I don't know where she grew up, but I would, I don't know. I mean, I say to my friends, like, dude, this little fucker, because they're my friends, I'm just meeting you, you're calling your son a bitch. And my wife goes, oh, he's a girl? And I'm like, I'm like, look at her, like, what's going on? And the woman goes, what? And all of a sudden it clicks. I'm like, maybe she didn't say little bitch. And I go, I'm sorry, did you say little bitch? I think we heard, did you hear little bitch? I think we heard little bitch. And the woman goes, no, I said this little bridge. This little bridge gives me a heart attack once a week. And I was like, okay, all right, yep, all right. So we heard bitch, that's just, this kid's playing. That swing is squeaky, that's a squeaky swing. Somebody should, you know what I mean? It's, oh man. The things you hear out here, you know what I mean? Oh, we just, that's what, you know, that's what we heard. Not, not what she said, clearly. Oh, funny. And then my wife goes, 
because I saw his frilly shorts and I thought maybe he was a girl. <laughs> to which I shoved my wife into a trash barrel. I remember my buddy who's not married, he's like been with this girl for a long time. He goes, how did you know she was the one? And I go, what's the one? He goes, you know, like the one. And I go, there's no such thing. We were both like in our mid thirties and we're like, hey, should we do this? You wanna have kids? I'm like, I'd love to have kids. She's like, nah, let's wrap it up. And that was it. That's what the one is. There's no magical human being that's gonna love you forever. There's gonna be someone that you're gonna hate some days and love other days and you're gonna be like, you wanna keep doing this? And like, yeah, we're in it now. And that's what you do. <laughs> the key is a king size bed. You need a king size bed, you don't have to see them all the time. You know what I mean? They're over there. There are some nights I text her, hey, do you wanna have sex? I don't even know if she's in the bed. And then she'll text back, yes. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then we, when we have sex, it's very quick, and then I just... And I go to sleep, and I, I don't see her for two or three days. <sighs> I do love her. <laughs> you guys are just like... I... Should we call a therapist? Now nah, we're good. We'll be all right. We have two kids. We, we made a boy. Beautiful, beautiful, sweet, cute little boy. Uh, then we had a girl. Um, I wanted two boys. I got a second girl and I was like, nah, we'll keep her. You know what I mean? We'll keep her. My wife goes, do you even love her? I was like, I'm just getting to know her. I don't know her that well. I don't trust her so much with those five little teeth walking around like George Jefferson all the time. I think she's up to something. Always in a good mood. I don't like people always in a good mood. You know what I mean? She's got a scam going. One night I was putting her to bed and when I put her to bed, I'd do a little rock like this. I do a little, little boat rock. I zip and then I dip. So she's like, feels like she's on a boat, you know? And I get her to sleep in my arms and I lay, her in the, I lay her in the crib and then she starts screaming. And babies, they don't know the difference in screaming. You know what I mean? Like, if they're a little tired, they're going to scream as if they just watched their entire family get murdered in front of them. It's like, come on, know your range, would you? So she starts screaming when I put her down. I pick her up, and I'm like, all right, I'll sing her a little lullaby. So I do this little lullaby, like, hey, my beanie boo, I L-O-V-E-Y-O-U, beanie boo, I can't wait to see what you do, do, do. She's asleep. I lay her down. She starts screaming again. I'm like, what the fuck? And I pick her up. Now I'm a little annoyed. So the lullaby isn't as sweet. It's something like this. Like, hey, Beanie Boo, I kind of love you. Your brother's the best and you will do. Just something, something, something to soothe her. I lay her down, she starts screaming again. And now I pick her up and now she's screaming in my arms and I can't get her to stop screaming. And I'm at the end of my rope and I just look down at her and I go, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I know I'm not a good person. I didn't know I was even capable of this. But I saw her and I just gave her one of these. <sighs> and I'll tell you, if there's one thing she didn't do, it was shut the fuck up. You know when it's thundering and lightning out and lightning strikes and you count the seconds till you hear the thunder, you'll know how far away the lightning is? It's the same thing when a baby cries. When they open their mouth, if you count the seconds to when they start screaming, you know how pissed they are. And my daughter went like this. and then shot through the roof. I don't know what happened, like an exorcism happened. And I was like, oh, shh, 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 it's okay, it's okay. And my wife comes in, she's like, I'll take her, I'll take her. And I am just go back to the living room and I'm pacing around. I'm like thinking to myself, we were doing great with three of us, all of a sudden this chick shows up. And I'm just like, I'm mad at myself, but at the same time I'm trying to put it on her. And my wife comes out with the monitor and she's like, well, I got her down, she's down. I'm like, oh, good, good. 
It's good. It's good. She goes, yeah, she was really upset there. I'm like, yeah, no. Never seen her like that. Huh. And she goes, what happened in there? And I go, I shook her. She goes, babe, you're not supposed to shake the baby. I go, yeah, I know. So I'm going through some shit. She goes, you know, you could hurt her. I go, babe, I didn't like shake her. I supported her head, you know what I mean? I was sending a message more than anything. Like, shut the fuck up. Like, if I told you to shut the fuck up, you'd be like, all right, I get it. This chick, no, nothing. I remember when I was eight, I don't know what I did, but my mother was pissed at me and she started chasing me around the house with a metal spatula. Now, my mother was a bigger lady. I figured one lap, I'll probably shake her. <laughs> I didn't. I go, one lap, she's still chasing me. We go for two. I'm like, this bitch is serious. I shoot upstairs, jump on my bed, pull up my covers. She comes in, rips down the covers, rip down my pants, and starts beating me in the ass with a metal spatula. And my whole life, I thought, I was beat that day. And now that I have two kids, I think back, and I'm like, she needed that. Beat your children! <laughs> Finally, someone said it. I think it's like when generals say, listen, if we gotta lose 100 guys to save 100,000, that's what we gotta do. That's what happened that day. My mom beat me with the spatula. We probably went out to dinner, had a great night. Ground round, pay what you weigh. You know what I mean? It was probably a good night. I just think it's a different time now. Like in the 70s and 80s, if you were in the grocery store and your kid like was mouthing off, you could just spank him right there and another dad would be like, you need a belt? Do you need a belt? I... You want me to hold him? I'll hold him. No? Nope. All right. They'd block off an aisle like, no, this guy, no, please take him. Just, just give him a second. Good form, bro. Nice form. That's what it was. When our baby was teething, my in-laws, they would say, you know, when Katie was a kid, we'd just rub a little Irish mist on her gums. That's whiskey. And I was like, what? Are you crazy? And they're like, well, that's just what we did. And I was like, you're nuts. And then my wife went out of town. And the baby was teething, and I was like, well, let's give it a whirl. I open up the liquor cabinet, I'm like, what should I get? I don't wanna give her the high-end stuff, you know what I mean? That going with the whistle pig, that was a gift. I see the Captain Morgan, I'm like, that should probably do it. It's a good intro, you know what I mean? It's coconutty or whatever. So I pour it into a glass and I'm like, all right, how do you give a baby booze? And I just like dip my finger in it and I just like rub it on her gum. I'm like, well, let's see how this works. And she's just looking at me like, hey. I'm like, all right, let's hit her again. And I get to I get down this side, you know, and I'm like, well, I should probably work the top gums a little bit, you know what I mean? So I knock those out. I give last call. Give last call. I pick her up. I take her down to her room. I don't need to cradle her. Don't need to shake her. Lay her down. She falls asleep. And I walk back to the living room. I'm like, this is it. That's it. That's all you got to do, a little boo. She's all right. The captain got her. I was like, who's dad of the year? The guy giving her freaking rum. I'm so excited. I, I cook a steak. I had a steak. I opened a bottle of red. I'm like, just have a night. Cook the steak. I sit down at the table. I got ESPN on. I got a bottle of red. I start cutting it. She starts crying down her room. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I go down there. She's thrown up all over the room. Chick can't hold her booth. Can't hold her booth. Just like her mom. Just like her mom. My favorite thing about that joke is tonight's the first time my wife's ever heard it. And found out that I gave our baby booze. So, that's a win-win. Do you know how old you were the first time you had booze? 10? Yeah, probably six months. 
It's probably six months. You just don't know what you're capable of until you have a child. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't know I would ever be able to, like, yell at a baby and maybe give a little shake. One day in the middle of summertime, it was like 110. The baby hadn't slept in three months because she had a sinus infection. We were like delirious. And my son's complaining because he doesn't like what his food is. And I've already cooked him three meals. And he's sitting in his high chair going, I want my fire truck. I want my fire truck. And I'm like at my wit's end. The baby's crying. And I just come in. I go, no one gives a fuck about your fire truck. <laughs> <laughs> and I left it. I felt pretty shitty. I felt pretty shitty. I walked by my wife and she was like, <laughs> like someone had to say it. And then I thought to myself, I bet no one else in the world has said that today. I doubt there's some guy like stuck in traffic because the guy's washing the fire truck. Like, hey, no one gives a fuck about your fire truck. <laughs> Maybe some dad in Japan, wash on dun, 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 fire truck, you know? That's pretty racist. I, I apologize. I didn't. I told myself I'd learn it in Japanese. I just didn't do it. I said I would. I really thought I would do it. I really thought it. People think marriage. I don't know what they think it is. I don't know what they think it is. The other day I go to the bathroom. I come out in the hallway. And my wife stands there. She goes, "You wash your hands." I go, "What?" She goes, "Did you wash your hands?" I go, "I peed." And she goes, so you don't wash your hands when you pee? I go, I don't know, what is going on here? She goes, what about when you poop? And I go, yeah, I wash my hands when I poop. And she goes, well, the other day I heard you pooping and I didn't hear you wash your hands. <laughs> and I was like, are we, what the fuck is going on? This is a court show, I don't know, are you suing me? I don't know what's going on. She goes, do you wash your hands when you poop? And I go, yeah, I do. And she goes, I don't think you do. I think you're lying. I go, you know what? Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I don't. And she goes, that's disgusting. I go, you know what's even worse? Sometimes I don't even wipe. <laughs> Just to leave her in the dark. Does he wipe? I don't know if he wipes. I don't know if Jay wipes. Deal with that. We had the boy, then we had the girl. I wanted two boys, didn't get him. So now I'm hoping he's gay. Then he marries another gay dude, boom, two sons. <laughs> then if my daughter's, yeah, kill her. And then my daughter's straight, marries a straight dude, I gotta force him for golf, boom. <laughs> for life. If my son is gay, me and the two gay sons, we're gonna pick on that straight son all the time. <laughs> like, dude, really, this is what you're wearing? Look at this, <laughs> what? Look at this breeder over here, come on, are you kidding me? <laughs> Fem it up, bro, Fem it up. <laughs> Take your own golf cart, get out of here. <laughs> all straight, get out of here. I think giving the birds and the bees talk to a gay son is gonna be a lot easier than to a straight son, you know what I mean? Because a straight son, you have to be like, listen, you gotta wear a condom. You don't, you don't wanna be having a kid, wear a condom. And listen, you, you should really find out, there's like, is she stimulated clitorally or is it vaginal? I don't know, but you should figure it out. I was a horrible lover in high school. It was like, hey, was that good? That's what it was. I had no idea what was happening. You gotta like give them education. I don't wanna have that talk, it's disgusting. But with a gay son, I, all day, I'd be like, listen, what's going on? You and Erica going out tonight? That's great, I love that kid, great kid, great kid. He got his license, oh. He's got that Camaro, huh? I love that Camaro. Listen, tonight, when you guys are going out, tell them to take PCH. You're going up by the coast, the sun's setting, mention the sunset, put on a nice song, and then while he's driving, you reach over and you just tug him right this, you just fucking know him. <laughs> Not even underneath, you go on the outside of the pants, and when he looks at you, you be like, keep your eye on the road, and just boom. That's how you keep a man, all right? All right, have a good time, we'll see you tomorrow. We're gonna, baseball practice in the morning, all right, buddy. <laughs> Gay dudes have it figured out, you know what I mean? They get it. When was the last time you had sex in an alley? Yeah, exactly. Because you're a straight dude. <laughs> Gay guy's like, hey man, you want to fuck behind this dumpster? Like, yeah, all right, boom, all right. See ya. Nice to meet you. You imagine Sunday football being gay? It would be unbelievable. Catch the first half, quick HJ, grab a shower, I'll whip up some guac, we're right back at it for the second half. That's just what it is. 
Guys are like, my wife and I watch football. Shut up. <laughs> As you can tell, I'm not really an adult. <laughs> I thought kids would make me an adult. I'm like, I'm gonna start flossing. I'm gonna register my car. Nope, nothing. <laughs> None of that happened. This is when I knew I wasn't an adult. I was at a party and I was talking politics with this guy. And he clearly knew more about politics. Like he was a full blown adult. And as I'm sitting there talking to him, I'm like throwing a couple things, he's throwing a couple things. And then after a while I'm like, you're in too deep. <laughs> so I start throwing out buzzwords. I'm like, well, we need a filibuster. We're probably gonna need a filibuster. I don't even know what that means. And then I'm like, you gotta get out of here, you gotta get out of here. I'm like, you know what we need to do? We need to start at the state level. That's how we take back the house. All right, man, I'll see ya. And then I just like, get out of here now. State level, he's like, oh, he's thinking regional. It's at the grocery store the other day and this woman's like looking at carrots. And I stand next to her and I go, what are you buying carrots? She goes, uh, yeah, buying carrots. And I go, you ever wonder what it was like the first day they found one? <laughs> she goes, uh, nah, never thought of that. <laughs> hey, well, I bet it was pretty interesting. Some guy was probably pulling weeds out of the ground all of a sudden. <laughs> 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 huh? Everyone around him was like, what is it? He's like, I don't know. And they were like, why don't you eat it? And he was like, what if I die? And they were like, what if you live forever? And she goes, I'm just gonna get my carrots. <laughs> I like to talk to people. There was another woman behind me in line. She had a watermelon. I look back and I go, hey, that watermelon's too big. <laughs> she goes, how do you know? I go, because I'm looking at it. It's too big. <laughs> she goes, you don't even know how many people it's for. I go, how many people is it for? She goes, eight. I go, yeah, it's too big. I go, you're gonna get home, you're gonna have it, you're gonna quarter it, you're gonna cut up a quarter. You're like, oh look, that's enough for everybody. Now you're stuck with three quarters of a watermelon. Maybe tomorrow you'll have that other quarter, but now you're stuck with a half a watermelon. Nobody's eating watermelon three days in a row. <laughs> she was so mad at me. She goes, oh yeah? Well, two days ago, my husband ate an entire pineapple. <laughs> and I go, he ate an entire pineapple. She goes, yeah, he did. And I go, you gotta go get another watermelon. You out of your mind? This guy's sucking back pineapples. You gonna roll in with this? Get out of here. Nobody gets it. How many people when you're grocery shopping return the carriage, the shopping cart when you're done? How many people return it to the little corral? Good people, good people. How many people tuck it behind a bush? They're like, this is someone's job to come get it. I love that you're like, it's goddamn right I do! <laughs> Keeping this economy strong. I've been on the fence, I've done both. For a while I returned, and then I got into like, we were going to this one Vons and the sharpening, usually the corrals were pretty close and I would like to do this one where you push it and you try and glide it in. <laughs> like you gotta be careful when you're shopping, you need to like bend it a little, like know which way it rolls. Does it roll right, does it roll left? Just so you can be that guy. You ever push it and you let it go and you're like, oh shit, that's gonna get a car and you have to like chase it. It's the worst. Someone sees you like, ah, look at this idiot. I was trying to be cool. I don't do either of those things anymore. Now I wait till I see somebody who's getting out of their car and I go, hey, you using a shopping cart? And they're like, yeah, why? And I go. You ever seen a grown man try and receive a shopping cart at 25 miles an hour? They have no idea, like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> but when they grab it, it's like they just like lassoed a baby calf, you know what I mean? Like they're at the rodeo. Go inside, maybe they pick up their wife. Because I've filled them with confidence. It's a transference of energy. I don't think being an adult means you have to stop having fun. You know what I mean? I was driving with a couple people, woo! <laughs> don't believe it in so much, so I'll just go, woo! <laughs> I was with my buddy Mike and we were driving. And we pulled up to an intersection, light turned red, and I look over the, uh, the intersection, I see this guy I know named Claude Shires. He's a stand-up comedian, his dad invented Gatorade. That's just a side note. 
So I see him, he's drinking out of a coffee mug, and he's got shorts and a t-shirt and flip-flops, and he's talking to some guy, and they're looking across the street at a building under construction, and there's a brand new Toyota 4Runner in front of it. And real quick, I assess the situation, and I think to myself, oh look, there's Claude drinking out of a coffee mug, he must live in the neighborhood. Who's this guy? Probably a neighbor. They're probably upset about that building under construction, because Claude just got a new 4Runner, his dad invented Gatorade, he's got the cash. That's just what my brain thought. It's been like eight years since I've seen him, so I'm not gonna say hi or I'm just gonna let it go. I start talking to Mike. In my rear view, I see Claude walk behind my truck, and then in my side view, I see him looking up at the building, walking this way. And I'm intrigued. I'm wondering, am I right? What if my hypothesis is correct? Only one way to find out, but let's have fun with it. So I look over, I go, hey bro! Can't park there, man. He goes, yeah, no, that's not my truck, man. And I go, yeah, but you can't park there. <laughs> and he goes, yeah, it's not my truck, man. And I go, move your fucking truck, bro. And he goes, it's not my fucking truck, bro. And I go, move your goddamn truck, bro. And he goes, it's not my goddamn truck, bro. And I go, Claude, what's up, man? And he goes, Jay? I go, yeah, light turned green, I took off. <laughs> Haven't seen him since. <laughs> and my buddy Mike goes, dude, who was that? And I go, bro, that's the heir to the Gatorade fortune. <laughs> and he goes, why did you do that? And I go, because he's just walking through life, feeling good, happy, maybe he's got a family. And all of a sudden, I just took him to a point of hate and rage. <laughs> What's better than that? <laughs> yes! <laughs> Let's kill them all! <laughs> Oh. I always thought I'd marry a woman so she could get her green card. Just because I always wanted to own somebody a little, you know? It's kind of what it is. I also wanted to marry a woman who already had kids so I could like, come in and save the day. I'm like, yeah, I know your dad sucked, but I got you. <laughs> Never had a dad myself, so I get it. Why is that? Why do we want to save? <laughs> I'm the only one who wants to. Like, I don't know. This got weird. Lock the doors! <laughs> Life is a weird thing. I remember, this was about six years ago, my wife got melanoma on her foot. That's cancer. And we were like, oh, cancer, that's like crazy. But I was like, who's ever died of foot cancer? Come on, get out of here. And we were like in our 30s and I was like, you know what, we're gonna beat this. There's no question, like it was no question in my mind that we would beat it. I didn't even like register. 99% of my brain was like, we're gonna beat it. 1% was like, fuck, what if we don't? Like, that's amazing, like this is the woman I decided like, hey, we're gonna figure it out together. We're gonna go through life. We're gonna do it together no matter what. And then all of a sudden she might be gone. It was crazy, like 99% of that 1% was like, I would be devastated. But the 1%? of the 1% was like, what? <laughs> We're back in the game! You didn't do it, the cancer got her! <laughs> but I, like, I don't wanna go there, I can't control my brain, so I'd be like, 1% of 1%, you shut the fuck up! <laughs> and they'd be like, what's her 401k? What's her 401 I'm like, I know, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. <laughs> Remember that one bedroom you saw for Red on Laurel Canyon? That could be you! You're a widow. Who doesn't love a widow? <laughs> Talking to other women, they're like, oh, you're a widow. I'm like, yeah, like, if you don't mind me asking, how'd she die? I'm like, foot cancer got her. <laughs> foot cancer, I've never even, I didn't know people could get foot cancer. I'm like, yeah, she was pretty weak. <laughs> Emotionally, I mean, just, you know. <laughs> Oh, God, I'm such a good person. <laughs> when you're committed to marriage, that's all you got is death. You know what I mean? That's your only get out of jail card. I can't wait for her to die. I mean, I'll probably be 92, but I'll be crushing it. <laughs> Hopefully my two gay sons have adopted. You know what I mean? Hopefully a couple black kids. Oh. Black grandkids, are you kidding? Killing it. 
that a little much for you guys? <laughs> I think everyone's a little afraid. We're all protective of everything nowadays. Like even our kids. I bought my son a swing set off Craigslist for 85 bucks. <laughs> Pretty safe. And then I built it with no directions over concrete. And then my buddy showed up and he goes, yeah, what, you just, you built the thing over concrete. I go, oh yeah, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> and he goes, what if he falls? And I'm like, oh, he's gonna fall sometime. Might as well fall right here. Like, we're gonna protect these kids. We treat kids like they're white sneakers. You know when you get white sneakers, you're like, oh, God damn it. You get like one little scuff, you clean them. At, at what point you're like, ah, fuck it, let's just let it. <laughs> he ended up falling off that swing, bashed his face open. Blood pouring everywhere. And let me tell you, the most gorgeous blood I've ever seen. This beautiful red. I remember looking at him like, I created this. Him and the swing, the whole thing was me. If you've never seen your child bleed, cut him. Cut him tonight and take a look at you and be like, holy shit, look at that blood. Our blood is tainted, it's disgusting. We've been eating steak with fat on it, swallowing gum. These kids are pure, they're like a brand new engine. Where was that kid beater earlier? <laughs> Cut them all! <laughs> Cut every single one. I don't really think you should hit your kids. Maybe flick their nose once in a while, you know what I mean? No one knows anymore. My neighbor the other day, 65 year retired school teacher, good guy. When I go out of town, he watches my house. When he's out of town, I watch his. My car battery's dead. I go over to his fence, I go, hey, Nick, you mind giving me a jump? And he just looks at me and goes, huh? Starts walking across the lawn. As he's walking across, his wife's right here and she's like this. I'm like, what's wrong, what is going on with her? He gets over to the fence, he goes, what'd you say? I go, I was wondering if you could give me a jump. And he goes, uh, I don't jump. I was like, what? I go, I have the cables. He goes, nah, I just, I don't jump. Now his wife is like, Ugh. <laughs> Like she's seen this before. She's going through PTSD over here. She's like, this friendship's over. And I go, what? I have the cables. And he goes, yeah, no, it's not good for your battery. I mean, you can say no to someone via text nowadays because it's completely impersonal and you're completely disconnected from the rest of the world. And you're like, no, and not even care. But face to face, I haven't been told no in a long time. And I was just like, I was just looking at him like, all right. And I was like clearly upset and I'm walking away and he goes, you know, you should change your battery every three years. And I look back like, you shut your fucking mouth. I mean, I didn't say it. I didn't say it, but I thought it. Two weeks pass. Every time I see him, it's awkward. He like jumps out of the way. He goes in the house. I avoid him. It's weird. One Saturday night, my wife and I are at home watching a movie. It's about 1030 because clearly we're killing it. And a car goes flying down our street. And I look at my wife. I'm like, whoa, that dude's flying. All of a sudden we hear crash. I run out, because I've always wanted to save a life, and start sprinting down the street. <laughs> Past Nick's house, nothing. Steph's house, nothing. Go by my neighbor Brad's, he comes running out with a billy club and a bandana on. And I remember running by being like, what the fuck? how do you have time to put a bandana on? Like it just happened. And why does he have a billy club? Like I'm trying to save a life, he thinks there's an uprising happening. <laughs> I get down to the, the accident, and basically a car had slammed into another car, backed out, given the bird, and then taken off, like a hit and run. Yeah, it was crazy. Who gives a bird, what? <laughs> hey, on top of this, fuck you! <laughs> like, I don't even know what that was. But what happened, when the guy smashed, his, his fender jammed the front right tire, so when he drove off, it was like, <laughs> and we're all sitting there like, Oh, he just made a right in Colonial. <laughs> was he making another? Why wouldn't he go left? You go left to Venice, you just shoot right down, you get out of here in no time. Like, it was so weird. And a couple of people already called 911, so it was like under, it was, everything was being taken care of. I start walking back with Brad. I go, hey, what's up with the bandana? And he goes, oh, it's gymnastics night at the house. I'm like, that's enough, that's enough. <laughs> so I get back to our house and I see my neighbor Nick now, Mr. No Jump, coming out of his house, getting in his car, and I go, hey, what are you doing? He goes, I just thought I'd go see if I could find those guys. And I go, are you fucking kidding me? 
This guy can't give a jump, but all of a sudden you're a vigilante going out into the night? I was so mad, I go in the house, I look at my wife, I'm like, hey, Nick's going out to try and find the guys. And she goes, oh, cool. And I go, oh, cool. She goes, what, you're still mad about the jump? I go, yeah, I'm still mad about the jump. She goes, just relax. I go, you relax. 45 minutes later, he comes home in the driveway. Wife comes out, opens the back gate. He pulls the car in the back yard. They shut the gate. And my wife goes, what are they doing? I go, I know exactly what they're doing. Nick found those guys. And now he's hiding his car in case they come back looking for him. She goes, no way. I go, Yahweh is my savior. <laughs> That's amazing. You'll use it. That's fine. Next morning, we're going to a kid's party. My wife's driving. I like to sit shotgun. I don't care if you don't think it's manly. I like to observe. I like to look at architecture. I like trees. As we're driving, I say to my wife, I'm like, listen, I've been doing some thinking in the shower and right now, and I want to run this by you since we live together and everything, but uh, probably going to do it anyway, but I just want to brief you. Uh, I'm going to put a note on Nick's door that says, I know it was you. You fucked with the wrong guy. I'm going to kill your wife. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was pretty, pretty direct. And my wife goes, no, you're not. And I go, yes, I am. And she goes, why? Because he won't give you a jump. I go, yeah, exactly, because he won't give me a jump. She goes, Jay, you can't threaten to murder someone. And I go, it's not a threat if it's not real. Like, I thought that was logic. And I was just like, that's not even true. Like, as it left my mouth, I was like, let me have it back, please. You got to make compromise. That's what it's all about. And I realized, okay, I won't threaten to murder this guy's wife. But then four days later, I got a little sign from up above. I'm raking in the backyard and under a bush, I find a dead bird. I get a manila envelope. Put the bird in it. <laughs> then in red Sharpie, I wrote on it, for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. Maybe a little highbrow, maybe a little highbrow. Left it on his doorstep. That car is still in his backyard. And my wife goes, what did you prove? And I go, I proved that when someone needs a jump, you give them a jump. <laughs> we do things differently. The other day she goes, I told Reed he had to go in timeout. He went over, put himself in timeout, and then after a minute got up and walked out. I go, and what the fuck did that prove? She says, what do you mean? I go, you can't just let him put himself in timeout. She goes, well, what do you do? I go, I grab him by the face, and I walk him over, and I say, sit right here, stare at the wall. We don't smile, we don't laugh, and when I think you're done, I'll come back and get you. And then she goes, and what does he do? I go, he cries the whole time. She goes, yeah, but now he's crying. I go, exactly, hating timeout. I go, nobody drives by a jail and like, I should be in there. I said, listen, I'm not raising a best friend. I'm raising a citizen. Someone who's gonna use a directional. Five people. That's right, we need more directional users. And then these people are like, I haven't clapped all night, I'm not clapping now. Son of a bitch. <sighs> Guys ever stayed in Airbnb? <laughs> Once, big Airbnb fans. <laughs> Here's the rule with Airbnb. You book it, you get to pick the room. That's the rule. I went to London with a couple buddies. They didn't like the place. They're like, I don't like what you picked out. I'm like, fine, I'll take the crappy room, which happened to be a kid's room. Had bunk beds. I slept in the bottom bunk. First night was uncomfortable. Second night, I was like, oh, this isn't bad. Third night, I just felt like a guy whose kid died, and I just couldn't let go. <laughs> like, I'm just playing with toys, like, mm. Like, I didn't miss my kids till then. I'm like, I miss my children. <sighs> Marriage is a tough thing. You gotta spice it up, you know what I mean? You gotta, like, sex is important, you know what I mean? That's just pretty much everything for a guy. <laughs> just sex. I was like, how are we gonna spice it up? I don't think a threesome's gonna work. Like, you can't have a threesome at this point. Kids will wake up in the morning like, who's he? Like, oh. <laughs> Why did he pick a man?
Tried role playing. Chick can't act. She's the worst actress I've ever seen. I'm like, how are we gonna spice this up? What can we do? I bought a dildo. Thought a dildo would be a good choice. I've never had a dildo, never used one. I don't know. I, first of all, I hate the word. Dildo? It's aggressive. I don't like it. Dildy? Would that be better? A dildy? No. I'm like, I'm going to get one, and we'll use it together. We'll, we'll bond over it. It'll be our... I don't know what. So my wife's out of town for work. I go to the sex shop. You know, I walk in. This guy's buying porn. And I'm like, oh, God guy working behind the counter looks like he should be working the ring toss at a state fair. You know what I mean? The whole thing's uncomfortable. I just don't like it. It's not me. I'm like, ah, oh, God. I'm just like, ah. Oh. And I look at the guy and I'm like, hey, how you doing, man? I'm, uh, I'm not going to buy like, like a sex toy or something. Me and my wife, maybe like a dildo or something. And the guy goes, yeah, I like that. <laughs> I'm just like, come on, man. I don't want you to like it. I'm looking around and I see the case. I'm like, oh, these, well, these are the dildos. You know how humiliating these are the dildos? <laughs> Is this the dildo right here? How do you use it? So I see this purple one. I'm like, hey, what about this purple one? The guy goes, oh, yeah, that's the Excalibur. It didn't say Excalibur anywhere on the package. That's just a term they're using around the shop, you know? I'm like, all right, let's take a look. Guy pulls it out. It's so big that when he puts it on the counter, it goes like a thud. And he pulls it out. It's this giant dildo with a little arm that comes off the side. That It looked like a cactus, you know what I mean? Like in the cartoons that vibrates like... And I'm looking at it, he's showing it me. I'm like, oh, put it away. Get the fuck out. Like guys are like... Ugh. I'm just like looking at the thing. I'm like so uncomfortable and I go... It's that thing on the bottom of the, it's that thing on the bottom. And he goes, oh yeah, that's a suction cup. I go, the fuck is that for? This guy looked into my soul. <laughs> like that, licked it, and then went up to the wall and went, and stuck it to the wall. And like David Copperfield was like, I had, I, I was so, I didn't know, I didn't, I didn't even get it. I didn't even know what, I'm like, I don't. Is that a coat rack? I don't even know what that is. Throw your hat on it when you get in the room. I don't know what you do. And like, then I had to ask him and I go, hey, I go, I, I don't get it. Like, wh what is it? And he goes, oh, well, he puts his hands on the counter and then goes like, like a little squat and goes, she takes it and then she gives it to you. I was like, would you fucking chill out? First of all, relax. It was graphic. I was like, relax, dude. I'll take it. I'll take it. <laughs> Pretty sure that's exactly what I'm looking. I don't need the floor model. I'm not gonna need the floor model. Maybe you could get one prepackaged, it would be nice. Don't think I'm gonna need this. So my wife's out of town, it's a Monday. And I think to myself, it's got this cheesy wrapping, you know what I mean? I'm like, let me lose the wrapping. I'm gonna get a nice box, get some wrapping paper, maybe a bow. I've never given anyone a dildo before. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> Has anyone given a dildo? I don't know what you do. I always thought it'd be like this. <laughs> That's how I always thought you'd give one. So I'm like, I'll get some nice wrapping paper, a bow. Week gets away from me. I forget to buy a bow, box, wrapping paper. <laughs> It's Friday, she's on her way home from the airport. I'm like, what the fuck? I can't just be like, here's a dumb dumb. Like, all I had was newspaper. That's all I had. So I wrapped the thing up in newspaper. It looked like a fish you take home from, like the guy's like, hey! All right, thank you. That's what it looked like. I had this giant fish I took home from Seattle. Like I made a quick trip up and like brought it home. But you gotta go with what you got, you know what I mean? So I leave it on the bed. She comes in. We're in the living room. I'm like, how's oh, the week? Oh, yeah, we catch up with the kids did this. Here's the video. And then I go, hey, why don't you, uh, why don't you come down to the bedroom? I got a little something for you. She was like, ooh. Like thinking maybe I got like lingerie or something. Come down. She walks in and I got the halibut laid out. 
And she's like looking at it. I'm like, I had to open it, open it. So she opens it up and she take, like, it took her two hands to lift it. And she lifts it and she goes, what is this? And I'm trying to be sexy, so I go, that's tonight. <laughs> I just, I don't never done it. You know what I mean? I'm trying to like do something. She turns it on. It's like, she's like, Whoa. like that's, she's just like looking at it. Like she's trying, cause she knows I'm trying. <laughs> and then she goes, this thing on the bottom. And I go, uh, it's a suction cup. And she goes, for what? <laughs> I don't know why I did this. I took it from her and just like that guy, I licked it and then I stuck it to the wall. Immediately, it fell off the wall, turned on and started flapping around like a dying fish. It went under the bed. I was like crawling. I'm like, I got it. I got this. And like, I couldn't get to it. It's like getting away. I finally got it. I'm like, oh, I got it. And it had like dust all over it. Because no one's clean under that bed. And I'm just like. I had a candle lit. It blew out on its own. It was like, this is, this is enough. This is, wrap this up, dude. And I'm just like, I was still like on the ground, like holding it up like the Excalibur. And all I could think about was that fucking carny that sold me this thing with the little licking stick technique that I didn't know. You know, like at the carnivals when the guy's like, oh yeah, it's super easy, look at this, boom, boom. And they just keep draining it. And you're like, wow, that's amazing. That's what he did to me. Oh, lick stick, boom. I don't know what kind of wall he's working with. I didn't test it out. Guy made me look like an idiot. So she's holding the dildo. <laughs> and she looks at me and she goes, I don't think so, babe. And I go, what's the matter? And she goes, it's too big. And I remember like feeling deflated. Like I put myself out there and I looked at her and I go, you don't like big dicks? And she goes, no, I like average dicks, like your dick. I wasn't even mad. I was like, really? You think it's average? All right. All right. <laughs> average is a C. I'll take a C all day. I was mad that she didn't like big dicks. I'm like, you just walking around your whole life into dicks and you didn't think big ones would be a good option? Like if I was into dicks, it'd only be big dicks. That would be my thing. And I go up to dudes like, oh, is this your big dick? Is this your big fucking dick? Just fucking... I would crush big dicks. That'd be my whole thing. Guys would be like, dude, stay away from Larson, man. He will crush your big dick. Remember the first time you saw a big dick? You don't remember? Of course you don't. You were lost in it. I remember in college, my buddy came over like drunk, like in a towel and took the towel off because he was so wasted. And I was like, dude, would you, holy shit. What is he doing with that thing? <sighs> we didn't use the dildo. We had sex with my average dick. And made a beautiful, amazing, cutest little boy in the world. And an average little girl. I'm just kidding, I love her. <laughs> Life's weird, you just don't know what it's gonna give you, you know what I mean? You kinda just gotta play, you play your cards and you get dealt and then you just work it out, you know what I mean? You're never gonna, always gonna have a good hand, you're not always gonna be up, you're not always gonna be down, you know, you just don't know. About a year and a half ago I was in New York and uh, I got a phone call from my brother. My brother never calls me, he's called me three times in 10 years. That's just, he texts, he's a text guy. So I know something's up. So I pick up the phone, I go, who died? And he goes, dad. And I was like, someone's got a flair for the dramatic. 
Now, my dad left when I was really young, and we all stopped communicating with him around the age of when I was 12. But then when I got older and moved to L.A., I started, like, emailing with him. So I was the only one with a relationship, so my brother called me. So I called my wife because things aren't real until I talk to my wife. You know, it's like that saying, you know, that saying, I don't know what I think till I hear what I say. That's what it is. Until I tell her, and I, I say, get, I get her on the phone, I'm like, so listen, I think I'm going to go home, you know, because my dad died. And she goes, and she's, <laughs> she's not a sensitive woman, she goes... To who? <laughs> and she's not doing it intentionally. That's just how she reacts. And I'm like, yeah, that's a good point. Very good point. Um, I go, but I think I'll just go home and, you know, I'm, I'm going to call my aunt, and, who I haven't talked to in 25 years, and see if she can call my dad's wife and see if I can just, you know, go through his stuff. Because I thought that was a normal thing to do. Like, oh, I just, you mind if I just peek around a little bit? <laughs> Never met you before. How are you? All right, good. And she's like, what are you looking for? And I'm like, I just want to get the end of the story. I just want to, I want to finish the book, you know? And she's like, all right. Secretly, I was hoping I'd find like a scrapbook of my whole life that he's been watching me forever. <laughs> so I take the train home and the whole time home, I'm just thinking about like things I have for my dad. I only have like three things. One was a silver penny because history note, during World War II, they used the copper for bullets and made pennies out of silver. And he's like, I know that. So I had this one silver penny. And you remember Dylan McKay from 90210? Yeah. You thought that guy was intense? I gave that penny to my high school girlfriend when she was a freshman. I was like, take this. It's the only thing my dad ever gave me. She was like, I'm just a freshman. I don't know what to do. Like, I was an intense kid. And I was going home for my... Then my dad passed and it was like close to Father's Day and Father's Day was always weird for me as a kid like I remember in third grade we had to write like Father's Day cards and I was just standing like at my chair staring at this blank paper and everyone's like I love you dad I'm glad we play catch and I'm just like I don't know what to write I don't see him and Mrs. Nelson was like Jason can you see me in the hall please and I go out there and she's like I'm so sorry and like buried my head in her tits and I was like this is amazing I hope my mom leaves it was like the first time I ever got, I'm like, what are these things? <laughs> Later in life, Father's Day became a day that I would like do things by myself. I'd build something, I'd go for a hike. One year I was building something, I went to Home Depot and as I'm leaving, this black woman goes, have a happy Father's Day. I go, oh no, I don't have any kids. And she goes, yeah, I know, but you and your dad. I go, oh no, my dad left when I was two. And she goes, and you'll be a better man for it. <laughs> I was like, how do you say that to someone? Only a black woman gets away with that. <laughs> Literally, she hugged my soul. 27 years of therapy wrapped up in one interaction at the Home Depot. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> so I get home. I drive up to see my aunt, who I haven't seen in 25 years. And I'm like, I get to her house and I go, hey. And she's like, hey. And I was like, Hey. <laughs> and she goes, do you want a drink? And I go, nah, I'm good. And she goes, we're drinking Jack on the Rocks. And I go, yeah, I'll have four of those. <laughs> and she's like, so listen, I called your dad's wife and she knows you're coming. And she said, you can go up. My dad like had a workshop. He was an antique dealer, but he made sculptures. She's like, you can go through his, like, his workshop and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, all right, cool. And I talked to her and then I went up and saw my, I get to my dad's house. And his wife comes to the door and she's like, hi, how are you? And I'm like, good. And she's like, so, um, you know, you want to go out and see his stuff? It's weird. Could you, I never even like thought what they were thinking that like some kid shows up like, hey, how you doing? Never met. Matter if I go through my dad's old shit? Thanks, appreciate it. <laughs> Where's his sock drawer? You have a sock drawer anywhere nearby? That's where the good shit is. And like my dad was like a little bit of a weird dude. He had all these weird sculptures everywhere, you know, like he had made all these things out of stone and I'm looking around and I'm standing like in his work room in front of his workbench and I'm just sitting there like, oh, he stood here. Like he would make things here. His brain would create here. You know, I'm a creator. That's what he would do. And this is where he'd be. We don't even have a relationship, but now I'm standing in his space. He's gone, but I'm there. I'm looking around and there's all these like weird sculptures. I'm the youngest of four and I start seeing like four baby doll heads on top of each other. I'm like, hmm four baby doll heads. I wonder if that's us. And then I saw another one. It was like four little kids lined up. And I'm like, oh, what's that? And everywhere I looked, there were just fours. Everything was in four. And I look up and I saw a sign. It said, tomorrow. And I was like, tomorrow you'll call your son? 
And then I see a baseball with four heads. I'm like, oh, again, maybe that's us. And I'm looking at it, and I thought back to when I was nine, I had to get a jock strap, and there was no dad around, so I went with my mom. And my mom was sitting there with, like, this guy that worked there, and she looks at me, she goes, what size are you? And if I had known, I would have been like, average. <laughs> but I didn't, so we bought a large, which was way too big. We got home, and my mother goes, why don't you try it on? And, like, I didn't know anything, so I went upstairs, and I came down in just a jock strap. And it's my mom, my nana, my sister, like in the kitchen. I'm like, is this right? <laughs> like a dad would take you out back and hit you a couple ground. It's like, is it pinching? Does it pinch? All right. No, my mother walked over to it and knocked on it to make sure it works. She goes, oh, that'll be fine. I'm like, I'll never wear that again. Thanks. <laughs> so I'm sitting there in the kitchen looking at that sculpture, thinking of that, being like, dude, you could have just come to a game, you psychopath. You didn't need to make some damn sculpture. Then I couldn't take it anymore. I look at the woman, I'm like, I, I, gotta, I, I can't take this. And I walked into the living room. I start looking around, and there's a bunch of penises. <laughs> Penis sculptures everywhere. I'm like, oh, he was into big dicks too. <laughs> and my dad's wife comes out, and she's like, you know, it's nice that you came, and I'm glad you could find some stuff. And I go, you don't think he was tormented? And she's like, no, I don't think so. I go, I, there's a penis with a fish hook through it. You don't think that's anything? She's like, oh, I never even thought of that. I'm like, oh, really? Every day I would be like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> that would have been the only thing I was thinking. And she's like, no, I just never really, you know. And like, I was so close to asking, like, did he, did he talk about me? Did he have anything? Like, just waiting for her to be like, well, he did have this scrapbook of all your stuff and all your accomplishments. But all she said was, she goes, you know, he had his own apartment because he didn't like living here because of my son. And I go, oh, really? And she's like, yeah, do you want to go look at it? I'm like, yeah, of course. So I go to his apartment, which is in an old schoolhouse. And he lives downstairs and some other guy lived upstairs. And I go to open the door and I do. And the only sound is a fish tank in the corner of the room that's one quarter full. And it's just like the filter is going. And I was like, how long ago did he die? <laughs> like, keep the fish tank going. It was two days, but it looked like it had been four months with the condition of the fish tank. There was just like books over here on silver coins and like all antique books and the place looked decrepit like, like he was living in squalor, you know? And then I went into the living room and I was like, just looking like maybe there's, some, maybe there's a picture of me somewhere. Is there anything here for me? Nothing. I go into this other room where he packed up and shipped his antiques and then I went into his bedroom and there were like the EMT rippings from where like he had died. And I went and stood where he died. I'm like, maybe I'll have a release and let go here. <laughs> so I just stood there. I'm like, well, this is where he died. Didn't feel a thing. Look over in the bureau, see four little statues of kids. I'm like, Jesus Christ, guy. <laughs> Unbelievable. You, did you die looking, like, looking at those? And I, I just kept looking for that release, like something to show me that he cared about me or us. And there was nothing there, you know? There's just, just nothing. So I went back to my aunt, gave her the key, flew back to LA, and two months later, my wife and I and our son, my wife is pregnant with our daughter, we were coming back to that same area for vacation. And I said to her, I'm like, hey, when we get here, I want to take you to the antique store where my dad worked and meet the people that he worked with. And she's like, okay. So we get there and my son finds some toys and starts playing with the toys. And I'm like, all right, I'll buy him this toy. And I go up to the front and I go, hey, the owner's here? Like I go to pay for it and she's like, no, they're not. And I was like, oh, okay. I'm like, just this. And I look over and there's a memorial of my dad, two pictures of my dad. And I grab one and I start walking over to my son. And I don't know what's going through her head. She's like, what's this guy, who takes a memorial? You're not supposed to touch memorials. <laughs> so I take it and my son's down playing with the toys and I just show him the picture. And immediately he starts laughing hysterically. Like my job is to make people laugh. And the one time he's ever seen my dad, he starts laughing and I start bawling my eyes out. And I pick him up and my wife starts hugging me and she's bawling her eyes out. And I'm thinking to myself, for the first time in my life, I didn't feel like the guy, kid who didn't have a dad. I was the dad to this boy and that girl. And I felt so amazing and I felt so loved. And I looked over her shoulder at the woman working there and she's just staring at us like, who the fuck are these people? <laughs> And at that moment, I realized exactly who I was. I was a husband, I was a father, but more importantly, who I wasn't. I wasn't 
someone who was not going to feel his worth because his dad was never around. And I hope that every day you wake up, you look in the mirror, and you ask yourself, who am I? I'm Jay Larson. Thank you so much. <laughs>